Welcome back for another deep dive. Um, today, we are going to be trying something a little different. Oh. We're going to be exploring the news. Okay. Through the eyes of a sculptor. Interesting. Hideki Inanuma. Yeah. Instead of like your typical news sources. Yeah. You know, we have this collection of news stories. Right. Read aloud by Inuma himself. It's really fascinating to think about what captures the attention yeah. of an artist when they look and, at the yeah. news. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's not just about the news itself, right? I... It's about seeing it through this unique artistic lens. So what kind of stories are we even talking yeah. about here? He covers like a really eclectic mix, you know, everything from okay local events, art exhibits, uh -huh. food recommendations, even a shout out to a high school baseball team. Wow. It's really like a glimpse into his daily life. Interesting. And the things that kind of resonate with him. Yeah, it's like a curated window into yeah. his world. It is. Which is super intriguing. For example, he mentions Shatterays, which is a well-known Japanese pastry shop mm -hmm. saying they have new sweets perfect for souvenirs. And then he adds this playful twist. Okay. Maniac recommended Spitz, not Spitz, but Sweets, joining the fray. Wait, Spitz like the... Like the dog breed. Dog breed. Exactly. <laughs> so it's this unexpected you know, humorous wordplay. Right. He's using this familiar image of this fluffy dog to describe the pastries. Interesting. Making it memorable and fun. Yeah. And it really showcases his artistic sensibility, you know, finding those unexpected connections and adding a touch of whimsy. I love that. To the everyday. It's like he's turning a pastry review into yeah. a little work of art. A little work of art in itself. But it's not all lighthearted fun, is it? I heard he gets pretty serious with a movie review. You heard right. He slams... Jala Love Tokyo, A Journey to Tokyo. Oh, wow. Starring Bakadir Zalalov calls it the worst movie in history. Wow, that's a statement. Which is quite a statement, especially since the title sounds like some epic adventure. Yeah. Right, like you have this heroic sounding title clashing with a yeah. scathing review. Totally. It makes you think about the subjectivity of art, right? Absolutely. Like what makes a movie good or bad in someone's eyes? Any Numa's review regardless of whether you agree with it, right. highlights that inherent tension. You know, oh. it prompts us to examine our own criteria for judging art yeah. and to acknowledge that those judgments are often quite subjective. So we're not just getting like the news, we're also getting a jumping off point mm -hmm. for this larger conversation totally. about art and its impact. Mm -hmm. Now, Inunuma also talks about a really interesting event that blends architecture and dance. Yes. He describes it, as a world of beauty woven together. Yeah, and this example speaks to a broader trend we're seeing. Oh. This blurring of lines between art forms. It's happening in music, yeah. visual arts, even technology. You know, there's a growing recognition that creativity isn't confined to just one medium. Right. And these fusions can lead to some truly unique and captivating experiences. And that brings us to another intriguing tidbit. Okay. He mentions a fashion trend of sustainable dresses being created using something called immersive technology. Interesting. What does that even mean? That's a great question. It could encompass a range of things. Okay. We're seeing virtual fashion shows where you can try on digital garments. Wow. Personalized designs using AI. Okay. Even the integration of sustainable materials through 3D printing. Wow. It's this amazing convergence of fashion and technology yeah. driven by both environmental concerns and a desire for more personalized and interactive experiences. Wow. So we've got pastries, harsh movie reviews, yeah. a fusion of architecture and dance and futuristic fashion, all in one news roundup. I know, right? It's amazing how he manages to tie these seemingly unrelated topics together. That's part of what makes his approach so fascinating. He's mm -hmm. taking in the world around him, filtering it through his artistic perspective, and uh, presenting us with these little glimpses mm -hmm. of what captures his attention. It's like he's inviting us to see the world through his eyes, to appreciate the beauty and the oddities, yeah. and to make our own connections. So where does he take us next in this journey through his world? Well, he shifts focus to an event called uh, Minamihita Art Discovery. Minamihita Art Discovery. Yeah. Sounds so mysterious. What kind of art are we talking about? He doesn't go into a lot of detail, yeah. but he does mention new automata. Automata, like those intricate mechanical figures. Exactly. That's so cool. Yeah. I've always been fascinated by those. They are fascinating. Yeah. I think like clockwork mechanisms, gears, levers, all working together to create that illusion of life. Mm -hmm. It's an art form that dates back centuries. It really is. And it feels like a perfect blend of art and technology. Oh, yeah. Which seems to be like a recurring theme in Enuma's 
new selections. You're right. There's definitely a connection there and this enduring fascination with automata. Yeah. It's reflected in so many things from like early robotics to modern day animatronics, even those incredibly lifelike robots being developed today. It's like this age old desire to recreate life, to give inanimate objects movement and purpose. And to explore that boundary between yeah. What's artificial and what's real? I mean, it's a theme that's been explored in art and literature for centuries. Frankenstein, Pinocchio, even the myth of Pygmalion bringing a statue to life. You're right. It's a story that keeps being told and retold. Yeah. But bring it back to Enuma's news roundup. Yeah. He seems to have a pretty diverse appreciation for art. He does. He even throws in a recommendation for Basque cheesecake. Yes, he does. At a cafe in Shinjuku. Yeah, and he doesn't just mention it. He claims it's so good it'll have you coming back for more. Oh, wow. You know, it speaks to his appreciation for the simple pleasures in life, those everyday experiences that bring joy. It's like he's saying amidst all the art and technology yeah. and big events, remember to savor the little things. Yeah. Like a yeah. delicious slice of cheesecake or right. a stroll through a charming neighborhood. Like Exactly. These moments matter, too. And that's something I find so refreshing about his approach to sharing news, you know, it's not just about the headlines. Right. It's about those small details that make up the tapestry of life. I agree completely. Yeah. So we've got art installations, delectable desserts. What else has he got up his sleeve? Well, he dips his toes into political commentary by mentioning the party picket problem. Okay. Which seems to be related to some kind of political controversy in Japan. Oh, politics, always a captivating subject, no matter where you are in the world. Exactly. And it shows that even with his focus on art, he's not immune to the pull of current events in the political landscape. It's a good reminder that art doesn't exist in a vacuum. Right. Yeah. It's influenced by and in turn influences the social and political climate. Precisely. And it makes you wonder how artists navigate that intersection, how they use their platform to engage with these broader issues. It's definitely a delicate balance to strike. It is. But it's also what makes art so powerful. Yeah. It can reflect critique and even inspire change. And Enuma, in his own way, seems to be embracing that role. He's not just presenting the news, he's encouraging us to think about it, to engage with it on a deeper level. That's a great point. It yeah. seems like he's curating a collection of thought-provoking snippets. Yeah. Encouraging his listeners to dig deeper and explore these ideas further. Yeah. Speaking of exploring, he then takes us on a culinary adventure. Yeah. Yes, he does. Reviewing some local restaurants. He mentions a place called Donabi Dai Gyoza near Higashi Jujo Station, claiming they serve amazing gyoza and pork dishes. And he doesn't stop there. He also mentions pike ramen. Okay. Which sounds like an interesting fusion dish. Interesting. He's quite the foodie, always on the lookout for hidden culinary gems. I love that he's incorporating food into his news roundup. It reinforces this idea that news isn't just about global events. Yeah. It's about those everyday experiences that shape our lives. Right. Those little joys and discoveries we make. Absolutely. It's about connecting with our local communities, mm -hmm. trying new flavors, and sharing those experiences with others. It's a good reminder that sometimes the best stories and most rewarding experiences are found right in our own backyards. I agree. So we've covered art, food, politics. Yeah. Where does his news radar take us next? He circles back to an earlier topic, fashion, talking about how celebrities are now sporting sustainable dresses created using immersive technology. Ah, the future of fashion. We touched on this earlier, but now he's giving us some real world examples. Right. What kind of immersive technology are we talking about here? He doesn't specify, but the possibilities are intriguing. Yeah. It could be virtual fashion shows where you can try on digital garments. Right. or even personalized designs created using AI. It seems like the line between the physical and digital world is getting blurrier by the day. It is, and it raises some fascinating questions about ownership and identity in the digital age. Huh? What does it mean to own a digital garment? How does it affect our sense of self-expression? It's like a whole new language of fashion is emerging. And it's fascinating to see how artists and designers are pushing the boundaries of what's possible. It's not just about aesthetics anymore. It's about creating experiences, telling stories, and making a statement. It sounds like Inanuna is very in tune with these emerging trends. It's like he's curating a glimpse into the future. Yeah. One new snippet at a time. And he does it with this infectious enthusiasm that makes you want to explore these topics further. So we've covered art, food, politics, fashion. What's next on his news radar? Well, he wraps up his news segment with a few final thoughts, including... 
a mention of a popular baseball team, mm. and a return to the topic of those delicious pastries from Shatterays. But before we dive into those, I think it's worth taking a moment to reflect on what we've learned so far. Yeah, it really is fascinating how he manages to like weave together yeah. all these seemingly random threads like art, food, yeah. politics, technology, yeah. you know, into this cohesive narrative. It's like yeah. he's giving us this glimpse into how his mind works, right. how he sees the connections between all these different I agree. aspects of life. And what's particularly insightful is how he kind of inadvertently highlights yeah. the interconnectedness of everything, you know? Right. Art, food, politics, technology, fashion. They all like influence and shape each other in ways that we might not always recognize. It's like that butterfly effect, isn't it? Yes, exactly. One seemingly small event right. or observation can ripple outward and create these exactly. unexpected connections. And I think that's one of the key takeaways from this deep dive. It's not just about the individual news stories, right? It's about recognizing that bigger picture, yeah. the patterns and trends that emerge when we step back and view the world through this wider lens. Yeah, I think that's a really powerful insight. Yeah. He's not just presenting the news. He's encouraging us to think critically about it. Exactly. To look for the connections and to understand how those connections impact our lives. Yeah, it's about becoming more aware of the world around us and our place in it. Absolutely, and he does it with this infectious enthusiasm. He does. That makes you want to explore these topics further. Yeah, he's not just reporting the news. He's sharing his passion for knowledge and observation with his listeners. Right. Which is inspiring. Yeah, it's really inspiring. Yeah. It's a reminder that we can find inspiration and wonder in the most unexpected places. Mm -hmm. Okay, before we wrap up, I heard he circles back to those. He does. Chatteray's pastries. He does. He gives like specific recommendations. Does he really? Complete with prices. That's amazing. It's like he's saying, hey, if you're looking for the perfect gift or just want to treat yourself, All right. here are my top picks. It speaks to his thoughtfulness. Yeah. And generosity he brings to even the simplest of acts, like right. choosing a pastry. And it loops back to that cultural aspect we discussed earlier. Right. The importance of gift giving in Japan. Right. It's not just about the object itself, but the thought behind it. Yeah. The gesture of sharing something special with someone you care about. Absolutely. Okay. So as we conclude this deep dive yeah. into the world of Hideki Inuma, the question I would leave you with is, how does your own unique perspective shape the way you perceive and share news what captures your attention? What stories resonate with you the most? And how might you use those insights to create your own unique tapestry of the world around you? Perhaps like in Enuma, you'll discover unexpected connections and find beauty in the everyday 